hello everyone and welcome you all to another new video and in this video we are going to take a look into the importance of coding in the field of astronomy well by now it's pretty obvious that coding is something that is widely used in pretty much all fields of science and engineering because in this day of data we really need to find an efficient way to make sense of so much data analyze it and come up with good results hence in order to do that in a smart and efficient way coding is the way to go in this video i'll specifically focus on coding in astronomy and how i as a graduate student and uh, someone who wants to make a career in astronomy in future uses coding uh, for his research and um, overall work so if i have to broadly categorize the use of coding in the field of astronomy i can give you four main areas where we need coding so let's start with the beginning. So first is observation or simulation. So you're observing a source or you're running a simulation um, on a particular study that you're doing. Um, and you definitely need coding in that. Number two would be to sort of process that data. So the raw data that comes out from your observation or your simulation isn't yet ready to start your analysis on. So you need to process that data first, do some kind of, uh, do some kind of operation on the data to make it legible. Number three is to, once, so once you get your process data, number three would be to sort of analyze that data, make sense out of it, what's going on, what, what are the science questions you're asking, how can you address those questions using the uh, data that you have. And lastly, number four would be, once your analysis is done, you would want to plot that data, visualize that data in, 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 in a meaningful way. So now that I've given you guys an overview of where exactly we need coding in astronomy, in this video, what I would like to essentially do is sort of expand upon these points a little more and most importantly i would sort of go over on a live interactive coding session where i'll be coding and i'll be sharing all of all of that information with you so that you can follow along with me so with all that out of the way now that we know where exactly we need to code uh, now the second step would be to sort of choose which language of coding that you would do now when it comes to observations and simulations there are like a few fixed uh, environments in and languages which you can typically run. For example, let's say you're trying to uh, study a particular galaxy or a star forming cluster and you want your telescope to sort of point over there. You don't physically go to that telescope, telescope site. Rather, what you do is you write a bunch of observing scripts, upload it to the server, and the operators over there will run your scripts and that sort of will change. Um, and that sort of will allow your telescope to look at a particular source. And that is the very first place where you would first have to use coding in order to first fetch your data. On the other hand, uh, if you are a theorist and you're running simulations, um, you're, you're simulating what happens when two galaxies collide or what happens in a molecular cloud when star formation takes place. In such cases, you need to write up all of the laws of physics, code that into a particular simulate, simulating software, and then uh, that would sort of run and give you uh, the results of the simulation. So now let's look at the three uh, remaining options. Uh, number one is processing the data, number two is analyzing it, and number three is visualizing Visualizing it. So in this section, you pretty much have that flexibility of which particular la language of coding that you want to use. Um, I personally use Python and I would kind of recommend you guys to use Python. The reason behind that is the learning curve of Python is fairly, um, uh, is fairly easy as compared to some other uh, languages like C and C++. So definitely go with Python. That, that is what I go with. Uh, I'm not biasing any of you guys, but I definitely have a sweet spot for Python. Okay, so I guess I won't be uh, wasting much of your time. I'll straight uh, hop into my uh, computer and we'll code together and sort of visualize astronomical data and try to make sense out of it. And I'll make sure that you can follow along with this, all of the links to the, to the code and everything, uh, including the data should be up on my GitHub. I'll share all of the links in the, down in the description below. So make sure to go over it. To, in order to really understand what's going on. Okay, so while I was actually uh, editing this particular video, I just realized that it would be a better idea to sort of put the tutorial aside onto a separate video because this was actually getting stretched beyond 20 minutes and I thought that would be a very bad idea. So in this particular video, which you just saw about, which introduces the importance of coding 
um, especially uh, how I use Python language coding in my research in astronomy. Make sure to sort of take a look into the video that's coming up next because over there I'll sort of uh, go over a, a coding session where I will load a live astronomical data, do some processing onto it, and just show you guys how exactly we use coding uh, in our particular research in astronomy. That video is coming up very soon, so in order to get notified, please subscribe to my channel and feel free to uh, press the bell icon. And, with, and in regards to this particular video, if you have any questions so far for all that I've spoken before, again, uh, feel free to comment down below. Uh, my social media handles should be flashing. Uh, go ahead, follow them. Uh, throw whatever questions you have over there. I'll be happy to answer and help you guys. But I'll end this particular video over here, but I really hope to catch you guys in the next one very soon, where, as I said, I'll go over to the coding. That should be super interesting and uh, keep an eye out. Thanks.